This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning, friends. I'm glad that you're with me today. This is Trinity Sunday, uh, June 7th. I'm glad you'll be here to celebrate and sing with us, as well as to uh, participate in our virtual communion service, which comes at the end. Um, a couple of announcements. Um, Phyllis, is, Phyllis Willis is taking charge of a, a food collection to be taken on Monday, June 8th. If you're watching this on Sunday, that's tomorrow. Monday, June 8th, between 10 and 11, her, her, her uh, truck will be parked out here, and you can either put it out or, I guess, hand it off. I don't know how she does it exactly, uh, but it's uh, no, no close contact, folks. We're, we're doing the best we can here. Also, I'd like you to remember again uh, Chris Tobias, and I'm going to include uh, uh, Becky and Paul's daughter Missy in, in our prayers also, Chris and, and Missy Tobias. Also, uh, uh, Bernice, I spoke to Bernice Boggs this week. Warren is improving and is going to be getting, uh, beginning to start uh, therapy this week, so that's a good thing. I'd like us to remember all of those who are in the nursing homes. Uh, or even perhaps have been in and out of hospitals and all those who are self-isolating. It can be a pretty lonely kind of a thing. I also want to tell you that uh, because we are going to have communion here, that after the sermon, I think it's actually after the prayer, I'll be stopping this, I'll be changing uh, the this, this, this look a little bit so that we can, I'm more head on to that, and, and then we'll hopefully piece it all together and look, make it look good for you. So uh, that, that's what's going to take place here today. Uh, please join me in the call to worship. The grace of, the, of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. God is far higher than our, than our loftiest thoughts, much closer than our most intimate experiences, far more complex and awesome than our best creeds, and more graceful than our most sacred hopes. Now let's join in our first hymn, which is Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God Almighty. Mm, holy, Holy, Holy Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our song shall rise to Thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Holy, 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 all the saints adore Thee, Casting down their golden crowns around the glassy sea. Cherubim and seraphim falling down before thee. Who wert and art and evermore shalt be. Holy, 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 though the darkness hide thee, though the eye of sinfulness thy glory may not see. Only thou art holy, there is none beside thee. Perfect in power, in love and purity. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, all thy works shall praise thy name in earth and sky and sea. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity.
Now let us bow our heads in prayer. Father, we praise you. Through your word and Holy Spirit, you created all things. You reveal your salvation in all the world by sending us Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. Through your Holy Spirit, you give us a share of your life and love. Fill us with the vision of your glory that we may always serve and praise you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our scripture reading today, the first scripture reading today, folks, is from 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 13, verses 11 through 13. 2 Corinthians 13, 11 through 13, I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. Listen to the Word of God. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. May God add his blessing to this reading. And now our gospel reading today is from the gospel according to St. Matthew, from Matthew 28, verses 16 through 20. Matthew 28, 16 through 20, from the New Revised Standard Version. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. There may be no Sunday harder for me to preach than Trinity Sunday. It is the only Sunday where you're supposed to explain a doctrine. And of course, the Trinity, doctrine of the Trinity is one of the hardest. I've never quite figured it out. But you can't explain a doctrine, any doctrine, in the time that you have to preach a sermon, even a long sermon. I used to put the so-called Trinity Shield on the cover of the bulletins on those Sundays when I was, when we had uh, church, when I was in church, we had everybody here, had a bulletin for everyone to look at. You probably have seen that Trinity shield. In the middle of it was a round circle and the word God was printed on it. Above and to the left was another circle and it said the Father. And to the right in another circle it said the Son on it. And directly below that middle circle was a final, a third circle, a fourth circle actually, uh, and it said the Holy Spirit in it. Between the circles with Father, Father and God was a little ribbon and it said is in it. The Father is God. God is the Father. And over here with the Son was another ribbon coming down to God and it said, so with the, said is. The Son is God. God is the Son. And the same thing happened with that one is in between. God is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God. And then there was another ribbon, the final ribbons between the Father and the Son that said, is not. The Father is not the Son. The Son is not the Father. And between the Father and the Holy Spirit was that same ribbon says, is not. The Father is not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not the Father. And over here was another one that said, another ribbon that said the Holy, the Father, the, I'll get there, the Son is not the Father and the Father is not, I'm sorry, the, the, the Son is not the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is not the Son. I'm going to show that to you. I printed up a copy of it. I have to do it this way because I can't figure out how to put it on there. Hold it up in front of you. 
Okay, you can see that there, everything is there. If you want to pause this video now so that you can study that a little bit, or if you want to pause it to like write your own little version of it, take, take go ahead, I'll wait for you. Okay, now if you're back with me, today's brief passage, passages, the 2 Corinthians from Paul and Matthew from Matthew's Gospel, the very end of Matthew's Gospel, are probably read because they both use Father, Son, Holy Spirit, or Jesus Christ, God, and the Holy Spirit in them. These are mentioned uh, in Matthew's Gospel and in Paul's letter, not because they represent a full-blown theological doctrine, in Matthew, in Matthew, the words, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. That is an ancient baptismal formula going back to the very earliest churches, the very first disciples that were the very first disciples who were baptized beyond those original twelve that were part of it, in baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. That's the way we still say it today. And 2 Corinthians, of course, has probably the oldest benediction in Christian literature. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. No Christian doctrine has ever sprung fully formed. It takes centuries in some cases, and actually it's taken the entire history of Christian, Christian faith, and we still don't have them all figured out in a sense, folks. We can't answer every question. We don't know everything about everything. Doctrines begin to develop, I think, like bridges built by an advancing army. They're assembled, they, these bridges, these doctrines are assembled because there is a need in the community to understand something, to say something about what, they're, what they believe, what it is that they're trying to do. They're assembled because there is a need in order that the army may proceed. There is a need for us to, to go and do this because, because something is necessary for people to understand as Christian people, as people of faith. At one time I used to explain, try to explain the doctrine, and I'm kind of going to give up on that I think now because sometimes, sometimes I'd seem to get it and other times I knew, knew I didn't. <laughs> anyway, let me explain this in very human terms. I use this uh, as a way, it's not a perfect analogy obviously, but let's say that, think about the doctrine of the Trinity, think about a woman. A woman is many things to many people, but to keep it simple, let's say that many women can be described as grandmother, mother, and daughter. Three different roles, three different roles, but the same person. And you cannot confuse those roles haphazardly. You cannot speak to grandma or to daughter. Uh, they, they, you, they have to have to do it from from your perspective. You know, someone who is outside that doesn't speak to grandma in the same way they would speak to a to a daughter to the to a little girl. The persona, the role between those three can change, but the person, the essence of that person, is still the same. I told you it's not perfect. Now let me make this suggestion as I close today. The Christian community is called to do service in a divided and broken world. And we can, we can see how troubled that world is right now in the midst of a worldwide pandemic. And when in this country we have protests in favor of justice and equality for African Americans, and I would like to point out it should also be extended to other minorities, to women, to LGBTQ individuals, all these diff different people who, you know, they say that Native Americans are suffering worse than just about any other group in this, in this pandemic and getting some of the least help. It's an impossible task. 
to explain the Trinity, that is. It's an impossible task. And the only way we can begin to do the work God calls us to is if we throw ourselves completely onto the mercy and the strength of God. And the only way that the church can take up the challenge, that challenge is transforming the world. And believe me, folks, this is the job description to transform the whole world, not to argue about how we understand the Trinity or the doctrine of, of, the, of Jesus, the, the Messiah, the Son of God, or the doctrine of the church or any of these other things. It's how do we transform the world? The only way the church can take up that challenge is to remember that all authority does not belong to the church but comes from God's example in the person and work of the Son in Jesus Christ. And the promise of the Son is to always be with us through the person and the work of the Holy Spirit. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you today and every day. Amen. Now let us bow our heads in prayer. Lord of the universe, who steers the flaming sun across the sky and calls the waters of the sea back twice each day to wash the shores of the land with great tides. You are the creator of our earth and of all the whirling worlds whose shining paths in the night makes us marvel. You are the craftsman who fashions the snowflake and the leaves of a tree and the restless fingers of a human child. How is, the, uh, how is it that we creatures of earth dare pray to you? O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. O great governor of all, land, of all the lands of the earth, here we beseech thee as we pray for the nations and for our nation. We pray for the president of the United States and for the governor of our, of our state. We pray for legislators and judges. We pray for all the nations and the states and the counties, cities and villages, all those who everywhere exercise authority and who seek to work for the good of their people. We pray for the representatives of the world's people who gather in the United Nations to seek together a way of peace guard and guide them all we ask you that they may have such concern for the people they serve that all personal ambition and national pride may be forgotten in a life-consuming devotion to the ideal of a world made one under your laws our father who greatly loves us may we be comforted and uplifted by each other's prayers Meet, we beseech you, the special need of each one of us for the sick, the sorrowful, and the lonely. We remember Chris and Missy. We pray for Warren, for those that we know in nursing homes and retirement communities, for all those who have been homebound and self-isolating. Lord, for each, for each of them and for each of us, we pray for renewed faith and hope, for a purpose in living, for the strength to go on a little longer, for a thankful heart in the presence of your mercy. O oh Lord, grant that this time may be fixed in our memory as a joyful and holy time. May the warmth of it shed a glow upon the days, of, days ahead to guard us from stumbling to give serenity in the midst of the world's clamoring confusion and to guide us that we may wander neither to the right nor to the left from your straight path. Through Jesus Christ our Lord we pray. Amen.
Please join me in our communion hymn, Be Known to Us in Breaking Bread. Be known to us in breaking bread, but do not then depart. Savior, abide with us and spread thy, thy table in our heart. There sup with us in love divine, thy body and thy blood, that living bread, that heavenly wine, be our immortal food. Come to the Lord's table, not because you must, but because you may, not because you are strong, but because you are weak. Come not because of any goodness of your own gives you the right to come, but because you need mercy and help. Come because you love the Lord a little and would like to love him more. Come because he loved you and gave himself for you. Come and meet the risen Christ, for we are his body. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Let us draw near to, all, to God now and offer to him our prayers of thanksgiving. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Gracious God, we praise your holy name giving thanks to you with our lips and with our lives for the power and mystery of your word by which you created us and called us to yourself, we give you thanks. For the power and mystery of your word by which you took flesh and lived among us through your son, Jesus Christ, we give you thanks. For the power and mystery of your word by which you chose common people, forming the church to be the body of Christ in the world, we give you thanks. Therefore, with your faithful people of every time and place, we join with the whole creation to lift our hearts in joyful praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Faithful God, we offer you our praise and thanks as we return to you these holy gifts of bread and the cup. Remembering our Lord's command to take and eat, we ponder the mystery of his promise that in this meal we are joined to him and to one another as a holy people uniting heaven and earth. God of grace and power, you invite us to share in mysteries that are beyond our understanding. In simple trust, we seek the transforming power of your spirit on this assembly of your people on these words and actions, on this bread and this cup, in order that by the miracle of your grace, we may be united to Christ and to one another, one in body, one in spirit, one in faith. And now as our Lord taught us, we humbly pray together, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. During this part, as I break the bread and tear off a piece and eat, you eat with me. As I lift up the cup and drink from it, you drink your own. On the night when Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had blessed it, he broke it and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me.
in the same way he took the cup after supper and said, this is the new cup, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood given for you. Drink it, all of you, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Let us pray together. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our closing hymn will be God be with you till we meet again. God be with you till we meet again. Loving counsels guide uphold you. With a shepherd's care and fold you. God be with you till we meet again. God be with you till we meet again. Unseen wings protecting hide you, daily manna still provide you. God be with you till we meet again. God be with you till we meet again. When life's perils thick confound you, Put unfailing arms around you. God be with you till we meet again. God be with you till we meet again. Keep love's banner floating o'er you. Smite death's threatening wave before you. God be with you till we meet again. Let us finish this service by reminding ourselves that it is not we who chose Christ, but Christ who chose us. Let us recall that we were not here because of our goodness, but because of Christ's grace. Remember that we were not here to enlighten ourselves, but to allow Christ to enlighten us. And keep in mind we do not go our separate ways alone, but in the company of the Holy Spirit, who has great things in store for us. Go in peace, love and care for one another in Christ's name. And all the blessings of the triune God go with you, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you this day and every day forevermore. Amen. Thank you, friends. Go with God.